You're calling for a global industrial uh, I'm recession? Not I'm not calling. <clears throat> uh, let me be very clear. PMIs uh, are below 50 all over the globe. So that's a global industrial slowdown. Right. You could even describe it as a global industrial. So there's not a question that we're in a massive global industrial slowdown. Whether that actually translates eventually into a recession is another debate. How do you respond then to the, the zeitgeist, the blog, the internet, all that stuff that says go to cash? Because I don't see you as a go to cash guy. I'm not a go to cash guy. I mean, what, I'll, what, I'll, what I'll, you, I'll how do you respond when you see people saying, world's coming to an end, go to cash? Well, the world's not coming to an end. Um, you know, the financial system is a lot safer than it once was. But like I said, we're in a global industrial slowdown recession, and the real debate should be whether that actually becomes a recession or not. But what, even if it becomes a recession, we're not going to have a systemic blowdown, blowout mm -hmm. in, in this next recession because the banks are just much healthier. Well, Steve, let's bring in someone looking at UK banks on the green in Westminster, Francine Lacroix. Francine, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Tom. Steve, before we get on to what's happening in the UK, does, you know, does a recession happen um, even if the US-China trade concern is dealt with? So if we have a deal, do we still tip in a, in, in a possible recession? We know the slowdown was taking, the industrial slowdown was taking place before the trade war really <clears throat> heated up. So I think, I mean, there are two major issues. One, is there going to be a deal between China and the US and I have my doubts, but I don't have any more insight into that than anybody else. I think the more interesting <clears throat> thing to talk about is what the global central banks are doing, including the Fed, and how long that will take to work or whether that will work. You know, at, the Fed started lowering rates in June. Um, any economist will tell you that the transmission mechanism takes at least a year. So the earliest that the U.S. economy should start to pick up is next summer. Um, that seems to be missing from people's analysis these days. They seem to think that if that lowers rates and everything gets better all of a sudden. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. But I think the more interesting thing to ask is, does the, tran the normal transmission mechanism of the Fed lowering rates work at this low level of rates? And I'm starting to have my doubts about that. Because and the answer? I'm not sure. I, I just said I have my doubts. I think the problem is, and this is, doesn't seem to be discussed that much, is that at this low level of rates, money's become free. And so every deal has been done, every project's been funded, every stock has been bought back, every VC deal has been done, every private equity deal has been done, every startup has been funded. The, what, what free money has done is create um, global, global overcapacity. And so why lowering rates should solve that is, I have my, I have my doubts, I really do.